Hey everyone, welcome. This is Paul Zarling, Managing Partner at Client First Tax and Wealth Advisors, and this is our video recording of our education event that we did in May of 2019, entitled, We Prepared and Filed Over 700 Tax Returns. Here's what we learned. Uh, your presenters today are going to be myself and also Justin Krieger, who is a certified financial planner with us. He's going to be coming up a little bit, and then we're going to close it out with, uh, with a panel discussion on a few items related to tax and tax planning. As I mentioned earlier, here's our presenters, myself, uh, Marquette Guy of Finance. Uh, Justin is a chemist by training, and uh, it's a central science, and so you think of finance as a central piece of all your, uh, your livelihood. Um, he puts all those pieces together for you as well. So what we're going to cover today is we did a lot of research on taxes because we did a lot for our clients this past ta ta pardon me, tax season. And we also heard a narrative that was kind of percolating uh, in the media and what was going on there. So we're going to cover some half-truths, what you heard from the media versus what really happened. We also want to show you some of the case studies that we did, uh, real-life clients, uh, what we learned, where it, where it came down to their, their credits, their deductions, their tax brackets, um, et cetera, what that really meant for them. And then we have a true holistic plan and system that helps you with your taxes. We're going to show uh, what that is and the steps you can take. So Justin's going to cover those. And then we're going to have a tax panel question and answer. Uh, myself, Justin, we're going to also add Renee Berg to that. She is an IRS enrolled agent, part of our team. And then the moderator is going to be Dave Zarling, who is the head of our investment strategy and research. So that will be coming up shortly. So let's get into uh, my section, which is on half truth. But before I begin, I wanted to start with a quick refresher on how the IRS figures out what you owe. There's really two quick steps. The first is withholding. They're going to look at uh, your information you provided based on your situation. And beginning the first paycheck of the year, they're going to make an estimate on how much tax you should pay uh, based on what your earnings and what your, your earnings support. Now, employers, if you're working, your employee, your employer will take care of this by sending the money into the government. And if you're self-employed or business owner, you send those in as well, along with your estimated taxes each quarter. So that's step one with withholding. Step two is going to be filing. When we file our taxes, we check to see if the estimates are close, and that depends on the following calculation. So here's the calculation. Step one is income. That's the amount you earn in a year in wages, compensation, tips, revenues, etc. Then you take out deductions, and that's money spent uh, that the government lets you subtract from your income, which equals your taxable income, and this determines your tax rate, which determines how much you should have paid throughout the year. We'll multiply that times the tax rate. This is the percentage of your income that goes to the government based on how much you made and your filing status, so going back to steps one and two. Then you're going to take out the credits, which is money the government lets you subtract from the amount you owe for expenses such as child care or education. And that equals the amount of tax you have. And the IRS looks at the difference of your withholdings or estimated taxes and what you owe. If it's a positive number, you get your money back. If it's negative, you owe. And so the number one expense you have in your life is your taxes. And we had a number of changes from 2017 to 2018 in the new tax code. So big one was on the amount of deductions. Second one was the, the tax rate. All the brackets um, diminished. Uh, the credits were increased in some areas, which would have an impact on your overall tax. So if we remember how this works and the different factors that go into each, uh, we should take a look at what that means. So ideally, you're taking a look at, well, did I pay less tax or more tax? And interestingly enough, what happened with the media right away is they focused on the refund, which was interesting. And so Politico came out and they said, hey, as tax refunds shrink, Republicans scrambled to defend the Trump tax cut. And that was in February of earlier this year. Uh, National Public Radio came out with a headline, Anger, Confusion Over Twindling Refunds is Trump's Tax Plan to Blame. And even later in the tax season, the New York came out with uh, tax refunds are down. That's a threat to Trump and the economy. And then News One, thanks Trump, people are outraged over not receiving a tax refund. So. Don't really care uh, if you voted for Trump or, or didn't vote for Trump. We're pretty agnostic when it comes to that politically. But it, for us, math always wins. And so it's interesting to, to see people slant on things. When I mentioned earlier, the first two headlines came out in February. The last two, even though some of the data started coming out, you still came out with those headlines in April. Uh, so that was a little interesting. And then I took a look at Twitter on what all happened there. 
take a look at did people tweet at the president or the IRS or with tax day and we've got Jeff saying thanks for absolutely nothing for what I'm pretty certain is first time ever my tax returns require me to pay the IRS at least my California refund mostly covers it but still blankety blank 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 this is a family education event so a lot of these uh, uncertainly worlds are going to be redacted uh, Toby mentions dear at Donald Trump my IRS tax reform was 1000 in 2017 this year less than 400 you suck that is all Justin says last year I got a refund of $7,500 now because of Donald bleep and Trump lowered the corporate taxes increased everyone else's I have to pay 1354 to the IRS I need a bleep and drink and finally uh, from LA uh, I'm seeing refunds for clients coming back mighty low this year Trump ain't blank and neither is the IRS so I'm not sure if she's working with tax clients or all this all works but if we come up, go back to the original formula uh, we see there's a lot of different dynamics with your deductions with your credits and with the tax tables and that's all that's going to impact your tax so interesting enough just on the refund the IRS came out with some data they published this on April 19th of 2019 the average refund in 2017 was two thousand seven hundred eighty dollars well what happened this year well 2018 the average refund was two thousand seven hundred twenty five dollars well that's really interesting so all this weeping and gnashing of teeth and all these headlines and you know but the Twitter meltdown was all over 55 bucks now I wonder if if you would ask those people well if you took a look at your total tax what was the number and Forbes came out with a pretty good article and this was earlier in the tax season this is a February article it's not about your total tax liability not your refund okay so that's earlier that's easier to say than done because some of the numbers may not be in but I think you could probably make some estimates back on it and I know the um, Tax Policy Institute took a swing at it earlier and said about uh, the average person will probably have you know one thousand two hundred sixty dollars less than tax but we'll see how this all plays out well let's go to the end of the tax season San Francisco Chronicle April 11th just a few days before the end of the tax season early look at tax data shows the average bill dropped in 2018 well that's interesting so people are paying less taxes so who's winning with this new tax code well most US taxpayers according to the Congressional Joint Committee on Taxation which is admittedly that reports a little dry but this information you'll find on page 7 is more than 65 percent will see their tax burden decrease and 30 percent will see very little change which lines up a lot with what we saw with our clients with over 700 of them where we found this exact same thing and this was across social and economic backgrounds interestingly enough I mentioned earlier uh, the Tax Policy Institute estimated about one thousand two hundred and sixty dollars in less taxes and the actual numbers came out to about one thousand two hundred so they're pretty close within sixty dollars okay who else is winning well I think the winner was the media narrative uh, whether you're a fan of the media or not according to an NBC Wall Street Journal poll 17 percent of Americans think they're getting a tax cut while 28 percent said they will pay more which is actually the flip-flop of what happened but I suppose if you yell it loud enough and often enough uh, you'll get people to believe so that's why we are big on education and getting the facts out and making our case um, pointedly and decisively and math wins who's losing I think the people that did not pay attention to their withholdings which I can't make the claim uh, for those that you saw from Twitter if they did or didn't but those that did not pay attention to their withholdings uh, it is your responsibility to be aware of your tax liability uh, claiming ignorance is not an answer and one of the things that we're proud of uh, that we worked with a lot with our financial clients throughout the year of 2000 uh, 18 is coming in the summer and the fall of the year uh, just to do some quick checks and estimates to make sure they are pretty dialed in and of all the people we worked with which is over uh, 300 or so 300 households uh, I can only think of one or two that were a little bit surprised everybody else was pretty dialed in now we did see some surprises for just our tax only clients uh, where they did not pay attention and they did have some surprises but most people were very happy with paying less taxes and if the refund was about the same or even less they focused on the tax liability number and not the refund 
So up next is going to be Justin. He is going to take us through five real case studies on what we learned this past tax season. So I'm going to turn it over to Justin Krieger, Certified Financial Planner, and he will take it from here. I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit when we do our panel discussion and to wrap up. All right. Thank you, Paul, for uh, going through some of the uh, what the media talked about um, a lot during this tax season. Uh, again, to uh, reinforce what Paul was um, emphasizing. So it's not so much important what your refund or amount owed is at tax time. Uh, we're going to take a look at actual total tax. So uh, this is the most important thing. So all the examples that I'm walking through here, um, we're going through five uh, tax case studies or examples from this last tax season. These are actual five clients of Client First. So I'm just going to focus on the actual net amount of tax. We're not going to talk about any withholdings. Uh, we're just going to talk about the actual tax. Uh, we'll uh, start off here. The first three are uh, families with children and the last two are retirees. So we thought this is a good representative group of our tax clients here. So our first example here is a married couple with three children. We have, I'm not going to go over every single line item here. I'm just going to give you the overview. You have all the information on the slide in front of you. Um, so they had in 2017, they had income of in wages of 90,813. Their adjusted gross income was $92,143. You can see they had a standard deduction 2017 and then five exemptions. Um, so their net taxable income for 2017 was 59,193. Uh, gross tax, 7,944. And then 1,200 of child care credit and 3,000 in child tax credit for a net tax of 3,744. With the new tax law changes, their 2018, they actually had about eleven, uh, about ten thousand higher of income, wages of one hundred one thousand seven hundred fifty-seven, adjusted gross income, one hundred one thousand seven hundred fifty-seven. Uh, standard deduction twenty-four thousand. Again, no exemptions, so they lost all five exemptions. Uh, so their net taxable income seventy-seven thousand seven hundred fifty-seven. So taxable income almost 20,000 higher than the uh, year prior. Their gross tax, 8,990. And credits were a $600 child tax credit and then 6,000 in child tax credits. So child tax credit doubled 2,000 a piece times three. So their net tax was just $2,390. Very impactful for a family making about $100,000, both parents working. Uh, net tax savings there of over $1,000 when their income was about $10,000 higher. And there you can see the, the actual savings is $1,354. Example number two, again, Married couple with three children, higher income family. For 2017, their wages were uh, 262429000 Their adjusted gross income, $265,095. They had total itemized deductions of $37,171. Five exemptions at $4,050 apiece. So net taxable income, $207,674. Gross tax, 45193 Had some alternative minimum tax. Child, some child care credit of $1,011. And zero child tax credit. They were phased out. So their net taxes were 46649 For 2018, they had higher wages, 275495 They had a small business loss of a small business that they just started. Their adjusted gross income, 274805 so about 10000 higher than the prior year. 
They were still able to itemize at 27,208, but you see their itemize was about, you know, it was about 8,000 less, no exemptions. So their taxable income was 245,597, gross tax 47,830. And they were within the limits for the child tax credit. So they got the 600 in child care credit and they got 6,000 of child tax credit. So their net tax was 41,230. So this is someone, again, their wages were, total wages were over 10,000 more and their net tax savings was over 5,000, 5,419. Example number three, uh, married couple with one child. This was actually our largest tax savings for a client at Client First from 2017 to 2018. So they had wages in 2017 of $247,001, uh, business income of 35412 adjusted gross income 280597 they were able to itemize 28174 and three exemptions at 4050 a apiece. So net taxable income $240,273. Gross tax $62,392. And no credits, so that is their net tax. For 2018, their wages were higher, $265,072. Uh, their business income was lower, 24780 They had standard deduction, or their adjusted gross income, 288698 And standard deduction, so they went from itemized in 17 to standard in 2018. So standard deduction, 24000 They got the benefit of the qualified business income deduction, that decreased their income by 4,628 off their self-employment income. So net taxable income, $260,070. It's about 20,000 higher uh, than the prior year. Gross tax, 50,995. They did get a $500 credit for that child. That child was 17. So they got the $500 credit instead of the, the uh, $2,000 credit, child tax credit. So their net tax, 50495 So a total savings of 11897 So this is someone, both, both parents working. Uh, they happen to have one child in college and one still in high school. The child in college actually filed on their own tax return. So they did not claim them here. They went from itemized to standard and they still had a huge savings. All right, moving on. I know we have um, we have a lot of um, our clients are retired or close to retired. So we I put two examples in here at the end um, that are representative of our um, retired clients. Uh, we have for our fourth example a married couple. In 2017, they had 397 of interest and dividends, 1,367 capital gains, IRA distributions of $20,056. Taxable Social Security was 22941 so their adjusted gross income was 24761 Standard deduction, 15200 and two exemptions at 4050 apiece. Taxable income was 1461 and gross tax and net tax was both $101. For 2018, they had interest and dividends of $198, capital gains of $632, higher IRA distributions in total of $22,106, taxable Social Security $3,658. Adjusted gross income was 26594 And their standard deduction is 26600 which wipes out um, all of their income, so zero tax, in, uh, zero tax liability due. 
So only difference of $101 doesn't look like a big difference here. But if you look, they had about $2,000 higher of IRA distributions. And they're, they're, this only shows their taxable Social Security. Their actual Social Security was about $1,000 higher in 2018 than it was in 2017. So from an income perspective, they had about 3000 higher to them cash flow wise. So if you figure that in their, their tax savings is actually more like $400. So a great benefit, $400 savings for a retired um, uh, couple. Moving on, our last one. This is a single widow who's retired. 2017, she had 3,036 in interest and dividends. She had a $3,000 capital loss carry forward. 30,190 of IRA distributions. Her taxable Social Security, 8,279. Adjusted gross income, 38,505. Itemized deduction was 10,417 and one personal exemption, so net taxable income $24,038. Her gross tax is 3,123, no credits, so that was also her net tax. For 2018, she had interest in dividends of 2,253, another capital loss carry forward of 3,000, and her pension and IRA distributions were 30,662. Taxable Social Security, 8152 makes her adjusted gross income 38067 So income is very similar from year to year. She had a standard deduction of 13600 And again, no exemptions available in 2018. So taxable income, 24467 slightly higher than the year before. Gross tax, 2747 Gives her a net tax savings, 376. So a single widow here saving almost $400. So we've went through some examples. Um, this was definitely, these five examples were definitely very representative of our clients here. Um, about 80 to 85 percent of our clients paid less taxes in 2018 net taxes than in 2017 uh, at the same income level uh, about 10 to 15 percent paid about the same and then about five percent paid more so definitely it benefited most of our clients and the people in our area so we're going to walk through um, some of our processes um, and how we do tax planning in different situations. Uh, we're gonna talk about tax management while working, uh, kind of tax planning 101 in retirement that most places do, and then tax planning 201 is kind of what we do that's different. And then we're gonna go over some uh, tax planning fun facts uh, and figures and extra credit for you to keep in mind. So, uh, I call it, I know the slide here says tax planning while working. I think it's better labeled tax management while working. There's only so much we can do um, to control your taxes while working. We can do some planning ahead, but when you're in retirement, you're a little bit more in the driver's seat. So everyone's got to consider if they're going to keep track and do itemized or standard deduction. Uh, health savings accounts, if you're available through the uh, health insurance you have, is a great benefit to reduce your taxable income. Charitable contributions are still very viable, even with some people um, or many people being standard instead of itemized. If you're still itemizing, they actually increase the cash charitable contribution from 50% of your AGI to 60% of your AGI. Uh, and then, of course, education investment savings plans. There's Coverdale education accounts available and 529 plans. So there's different tools you can use there to plan for... Um, children's or if you're a grandparent for um, grandchildren um, college costs tax credits for education expenses this one is is kind of emerges as one of the most complicated areas of planning we do uh, i spend quite a bit of time with our cpas here greta and meredith during the tax season so 
if you have older high school age going into college um, kids, um, I'd encourage you to, um, if you're doing planning with us, that's great. Or if it's another tax firm to really do some diligent planning there. <laughs> what we've seen, one of the top mistakes here is, um, well, I'm going to call you, let's say your oldest uh, child is Johnny. So Johnny has worked some part-time jobs. His tax returns are real simple. So you've just filed them for free online. And then, you know, he didn't, he made five or $10,000 when he went to college. Same thing as tax returns, pretty simple. Let's just file that online for free. That has ended up to be a mistake in many cases because we really need all of your child's information, you know, to see where the education credits are best used. So are they best used on the parent's return or on Johnny's? Um, every family is a little bit different. Um, so we really like to optimize those education credits. Those education credits um, are, they're credits, so they're not deductions, so they're dollar for dollar reductions of tax. And many of them, uh, like the American Opportunity Credit, they are only available for the first four years of undergraduate. So they're credits, you have to take advantage of while um, they're in college the first time. And if you don't use them, you know, um, if you don't use them wisely the first time, you only get to use them once each time or for each year. Traditional IRA or Roth IRA, traditional 401k or Roth 401k contributions. So uh, taking a look at where you're saving currently at work or independently through an IRA or 401k. Um, just taking some a look at what tax bracket you might think you'll be in the future. Um, for many families who have kids at home, they're under some of the lowest tax brackets and tax rates they probably will be for most of their life. So you might want to consider Roth, which is after tax and then never taxed again. Moving on forward. So tax planning in retirement 101. Um, so this is what most people think of tax planning um, and kind of the most basic things. So again, itemize your standard. Everyone's got to make that selection by default. Charitable contributions, um, if you're able to itemize. Roth IRA conversion, should you do this? Is it a good idea or not? That depends on your situation. Tax efficient retirement account distribution strategy. So that's just figuring out how are we going to best plan for when to turn on Social Security and IRAs, etc., based on how they're taxed. Um, not all, all money spends the same, but it's not taxed the same. So this is what most people kind of do. Um, our next slide coming up here, re, uh, Tax Planning and Retirement 201. This is more advanced. This is where a client first goes above and beyond what other places do. So again, itemize your standard. We're, uh, everyone's forced to do that. Health savings accounts and Medicare savings accounts. So if these are something you have already saved um, up money in, um, if you have a, for example, if you have a great amount of money in an HSA account going into retirement, an MSA Medicare Advantage plan with a, an account along with it may work for you. Um, again, using HSA funds in retirement wisely. Charitable contributions. So a lot of people have said with the new tax law, and every most people are standard, there's not really benefit to being charitable. Um, uh, people give to charities and nonprofits for the right reason. They don't give for a tax reason. Um, but if you are charitable, um, um, you know, because you believe in the mission of an organization or... Um, uh, you know, it's a faith-based organization. Um, you're, you're definitely giving for the right reason there. Um, but then we can uh, definitely have you, whatever you're giving to them, we can plan in the most tax-efficient manner. So a qualified charitable distribution is when we take money directly from an IRA and send it uh, to a church or nonprofit. It is not taxed. So if you were standard deduction before, and you weren't able to take advantage of the deduction, you essentially get the advantage of the deduction, just like you were able to itemize before. 
So this is a great tool we've been using with uh, many of our clients. This cannot be done from a 403B or 401K. It has to be done from an IRA. And it cannot be done until you're 70 and a half or older. Also, donating appreciated assets could be a stock, could be real estate, um, could be part of a business. And then donor advised funds are something new in the last five years or so. Um, this is basically a mini foundation. They put this structure into place where you can have basically a, a small family um, charitable foundation that can live, live uh, perpetually, um, uh, potentially forever in your family's name. And then your beneficiaries or people you put in charge can uh, decide who gets it. Uh, Tax-efficient retirement account distribution strategy, we talked about that. Advanced Roth IRA conversion opportunities. Uh, Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act tax subsidy planning. This is something that's huge. If you have, uh, you know, a common scenario is one spouse is 66 when they retire, the other one is 63. So the uh, spouse at 66, they can go on Medicare, but the spouse that's 63 needs health insurance for two years. Uh, we can help find the best insurance for them and then find the best tax subsidy scenario for them. So there's, if you stay under certain income limits, you can receive five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a year of tax subsidies to help pay for it. Um, this is a great opportunity for people retiring to help save on their health insurance costs. Tax planning for people who pay zero taxes. So if someone says, well, I don't have to file... Um, that normally is like a blue light special to me, if you remember that at Kmart, um, that they can do tax planning. They can probably do some things in the 0% tax bracket that will benefit them and their family. Uh, net unrealized appreciation. Uh, this is something very specialized. If you have company stock inside the 401k plan for that company specifically. So if you um, worked at a company and held that company stock inside your 401k, this might benefit you, but it's very specialized. Paying 0% tax on long-term capital gains. Um, so this is huge benefit since the 12% um, uh, bracket is now up to 77,400. Uh, um, if you're in that taxable range or below, long-term capital gains are taxed at 0%. Uh, and then planning for required minimum distributions. Um, doesn't always make sense to not take money out of IRAs uh, until you have to. Sometimes it makes sense to take them before 70 and a half. So just planning for that distribution strategy. So now we have some fun tax planning, fun facts, figures, extra credits, things to keep in mind. So for 2019, uh, the 12% tax tax bracket now goes up to 78,950. So that means, um, so if we do the math there, 78,950, uh, and the standard deduction is now 24,400. It was 24,000 last year. That means that um, if you have a married couple who's over 65, they get an extra 1300 per person. So their effective standard deduction is 27,000. So if you add that onto the 78,950, they could have a modified adjusted gross income of 105,950. The standard deduction for people under 65 is 24,400. So my second bullet point there, I should have clarified um, the standard deduction in 2018 was 24000 Standard deduction in 2019 is 24400 But in both years, for each person over 65, you get an extra 1300 So the $27,000 standard deduction is for both spouses over 65. Child tax credit is now 2000 instead of 1000 and the um, income limits, uh, again, are higher for the phase-out. There's a dependent care credit of 500 which was not present before. 
And we have traditional and Roth IRA contribution limits are now 6,000. They were at 5,500 for quite a few years and you still have a thousand dollar catch up. So if you're over uh, 50, your effective contribution limit is 7,000. Um, Roth IRAs can be a bad idea. Um, it, again, everyone likes Roth. Sometimes I run into it where you, you might be in a lower tax bracket in retirement than while you're working. Um, that would be a scenario where a Roth would actually be bad, where you pay the taxes while you're working. So it's just what I'm saying there is each uh, scenario is uh, very unique. Social Security is less taxable than IRA distributions. You need to keep this in mind when you're doing planning. And then remember, every tax dollar saved is risk-free return. So we want to save as much money and pinch those pennies um, on taxes when we can. So our true holistic planning is focused on being proactive. Um, and the tax plan planning is integrated into our true holistic planning process for all of our clients who are planning processes. So every you can't just do tax um, planning in a vacuum by itself. You got to take into consideration all these other things like investments, uh, your cost of living, Social Security, etc. So um, we integrate this as a holistic process um, for all of our planning clients. Next up, we're going to have our tax plan panel. Uh, Dave is going to be the MC for this. Uh, so please um, welcome Dave as he comes in uh, to interview us on what we learned from uh, the 2018 tax season. All right, uh, this next section of our presentation mirrors something we did live uh, for our Lunch and Learn attendees, and it was a big hit, so we thought we'd go over it again here for you guys uh, who might be watching this on YouTube. Uh, my name is David Zarling. I'll be asking the questions today, which will be a lot of fun. And I have Paul Zarling, who is our managing partner, Justin Krieger, who is our certified financial planner, and Renee Bird, who is our resident enrolled IRS enrolled agent. And so we're going to jump into this. We have some <clears throat> questions for these guys, and they have to uh, hopefully provide some insight. And there's a lot of knowledge on this panel. From this last year, we did over 700 tax returns. So congratulations, guys, on another you know, uh, year well, well done. Um, the first question I want to start with uh, that kind of is a, more a curiosity for me, uh, but might probably provide insight to those people listening or watching is, you know, what are, what's some of the biggest changes you guys have seen in the tax code, let's say, over the past five years? Is there one thing in particular that sticks out to you? And I'm kind of looking at Renee and Justin just because of your past experience. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'd, I'd say that because of the fact that the major changes that occurred in the tax code um, just took place now, effective um, for tax year 2018, uh, when the law was signed into effect on December 22nd, 2017. Um, prior to that, the biggest change in tax code was over 30 years ago. So um, I I would have to refer to Justin on that of different things he's seen from the tax planning standpoint of it. So the biggest um, changes that we've seen are uh, standard deductions being uh, significantly higher than they were in the past. Uh, for tax year 2018, standard deduction for single was $12,000. For married filing jointly, it was $24,000. And then the elimination of the personal exemptions uh, and then the elimination of the miscellaneous deductions on your itemized deduction uh, subject to 2% of adjusted gross income. Uh, those, those were big changes. The other big changes were child uh, tax credit going from a thousand per child to two thousand, and also the adjusted gross income limits going up for a family who's eligible for child tax credits. And uh, and then the last one, most notably, is just the drop in tax brackets themselves. So the fifteen percent bracket went to the twelve percent bracket, and the twenty five percent bracket went to the twenty two percent bracket. 
uh, and the, let's see, the 20, can't remember the ones above there, but all, even the higher brackets, so now there's a 24, um, 32, so all the brackets dropped. The 12% bracket and the 22 are its most impactful to most people. Okay, got it. Um, so I kind of want to swing back to, you know, Paul, you got to see a lot of um, our tax clients this past year. Um, you know, you're, you're our managing uh, partner. You have a master's in business um, from Marquette. Uh, you've dealt with anything from very small companies to very big companies in your mm -hmm. past. You know, what, what kind of things did you see this past tax year or maybe were impacted by that history, you know, bringing it up till now with our clients? Yeah, I mean, you know, it was a busy tax season right away. We got shot out of a cannon. And, you know, we saw everybody kind of up and down the, the social economic um, spectrum or ladder, however you want to say it. So whether it was, you know, a couple with a couple kids to uh, business owners to someone in the medical community has their own practice. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, like we mentioned earlier in the presentation, 65% um, of, of, of our clients were less tax for sure. 30% were maybe the same, maybe a little less, and then, you know, 5%, you know, had a little more. But uh, it didn't really matter where you came from or what you're doing. Most of the tax code was helpful for, for everyone. Awesome. And so, you know, visiting with, what was it, I don't know, 450 or whatever, how many I saw this year, um, you know, if they had their things dialed in with withholdings, you know, easy conversation. If they, you know, didn't pay attention to their withholdings and they had a little bit of surprises in the year, you know, then we had to kind of walk through some education on, mm -hmm. you know, how the whole system works and how all the numbers work together. Yep. Good. Good. Justin, you have three letters behind your name. CFP stands for Certified Financial Planner. Can you kind of give our listeners a little more information on what, what that is exactly? What is a Certified Financial Planner? Sure. So... <clears throat> I actually went to school, my four-year degree is in chemistry, which is a central science. And uh, so that means you get to put together math, physics, biology, um, chemistry, kind of where all those things come together. Um, so I worked in that industry for a couple of years, and then I got into financial services, became a certified financial planner. So finance is really the, the central science of, if you will, of the world right now. Everything revolves around um, uh, money since we're not an agrarian society for the most part I, anymore so I really I really enjoy helping people so I'm able to put all these different things together as a certified financial planner so you have uh, investments financial planning insurance taxes all these things um, uh, come together as a planner uh, as you can help people plan for the future mm -hmm. so talk to me about the, the certified financial planner the certification part is that something where I can just go online and for ten bucks I can get my own CFP, or how does that how does that work? Not quite. So you have to take six classes. Um, you can either do them uh, in the classroom or self study. I did all mine self study. So you have six regimented classes, and then you have homework for that, and then you have a test at the end of each class. So you have to pass all of those. Mm -hmm. um, most of those classes are about six to eight weeks in length, and then you have to take a capstone test. Cap to, capstone test is 10 hours long. Okay. So through all my years of chemistry and math and physics, um, the certified financial planner test was definitely harder than any of my college wow. classes. That says courses. a lot that that would be harder than some of the chemistry work that you had to do. So was it, all ten, was it 10 hours all at once? No, it was four hours on a Friday afternoon and two three-hour sessions on Saturday. They give you a okay. one-hour break on Saturday. And then there's continuing education, I assume, for something yep. like that, too. Yes, so 24 hours every two years. Okay, awesome. Very good. Congratulations on that. And then kind of swinging over to you, Renee, there's an EA behind your name standing for Enrolled Agent. Can you give us a semblance or an idea what that what does that mean? What is that all about? Um, an enrolled agent is, um, I kind of refer to it as like a... Um, a CPA that specializes in taxation. Okay. Uh, so my background, um, I worked in a business office at a nursing home for 20 years. Um, always did accounting work, um, anything from billing all the way up to payroll. Um, and I found that in doing my my um, 
learning how to do taxes. Um, I kind of started wanting to do that after working in the payroll department. I had so many employees coming to me saying, you know, what should I do with withholdings? Well, that particular, the year that I started learning how to do taxes, um, I knew I'd be getting married soon and buying my own house. I'd been used to preparing my own taxes all these years. I wanted to find out more about doing that. So I started taking the classes, um, and I, I, um, which was able to help me in my job too at, at the nursing home that I could help employees learn their withholdings. But over all of those years, um, I've been doing taxes now for 20 years, started in 1999. That's awesome. And, yeah, it's been a few years. Um, so being an enrolled agent, you have to have the tax background behind you because uh, the test is very similar to the CFP test. Um, we had a series of three different tests. The first test you had a, um, was a three-hour test on individual. Um, the second test was on business, which was also a three-hour test, and then the third was on ethics. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was a very intensive And you had to travel for that, correct? Like you I did. To, okay. Yeah, we went to, I took, well, I took the final in Waukesha. I did my uh, training for it. I did an EA boot camp in Vegas. Okay, awesome. Congratulations. Both, I mean, both of those, the CFP and the EA, very complimentary, considering that we handle financial planning and taxes here. It's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead, Justin. You look like Renee, you, you started formally doing taxes in 1999, but didn't you start doing your family's taxes? <laughs> much earlier. How how old were you when you started doing your parents' taxes? Oh, don't answer that. I did. Don't give away your age. <laughs> yeah, don't do no, the I age. Just, just do the year. Yeah, just, come on. <laughs> well, no, I can, I can say my I st my dad was always one that he went. He was a very particular person. Um, everything had to be just so. He started training me on doing his taxes when I was twelve. Okay, that's and, awesome. <laughs> wow. So um, so when we were playing little league. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing, Dave. What's nice about enrolled agent for our our clients, you know, she can, she can represent her her knowledge goes all the way up to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. If everything ever went that direction, and we needed that, we would have that kind of resource. Uh, for well, our let's hope up. we never have to end up yes. in the Supreme <laughs> right. Court. But that's great to know that you have that expertise. Mm -hmm. um, jumping into some of these other questions. You know, invariably when uh, dealing with people and taxes, people tend to wait to the last minute. Um, we had a few of those this year. Mm -hmm. um, what are some things that people should be thinking about now or could be thinking about now for the 2019 tax year that would help them not procrastinate for this upcoming year? Um, the one thing I'd like to say about it is even though with the change in standard deduction, the majority of people aren't going to be itemizing anymore, but the thing people forget is that on the state side of it, you also get itemized deduction credits. Um, and even so, your the medical doesn't count quite as much, but uh, for the charitable, your mortgage interest statements, your um, charitable contributions, um, property taxes, those are all items that you still need to track for the state side of it, even if it doesn't help you on the federal. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. yeah, I think the other thing is, you know, for our financial clients, they can come in any time they want. If they want to do some tax planning in the summer or the fall, make any adjustments, they still got some time left in the year. Um, if you're just a tax-only client, make an appointment with us. We can certainly help you do that. Make sure your withholdings are withheld so there's no surprises coming up. And then, you know, we, we send everything out early. So if you're a returning tax client in early January, you're going to get a custom organizer. You should have received all your paperwork by January 15th uh, from us and then from your you know, employer and bank statements and 1099s mm -hmm. from, from everybody else like the end of January. And then K-1s for those that have them will be March. But, you know, don't just wait, like you said, Dave, until, you know, April 13th mm -hmm. to try to consolidate everything, put everything together. You have all the tools. At least with us, you have the procedures and the, and the, and the tools to to get ahead of the game. Okay. No, well, that's good. Um, I guess what I wanted to talk about a little bit, because the people that will be listening to this um, are following on YouTube and where we post these videos has gotten a lot bigger. Uh, so the chances of someone who maybe hasn't experienced us or done business with us in the past um, is going to be greater. And so can you guys give some insight into, talk a little bit more about doing taxes with client first versus other places. Like, I don't want you to poo-poo 
what someone else is doing, but I guess uh, what I'm asking is what what's some experiences that they're going to have at mine first that's going to be different than going with someone else for that? Sure. Um, I'll give an answer, I think, that maybe Justin can have an answer on, uh, you know, weaving tax and financial planning together. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as doing taxes with us, you have someone like Renee, you've got her, her team that does a great job. So you just have the expertise there with an IRS enrolled agent or, or CPAs. Um, if someone's looking for just a, a quick in and out, um, you know, doing it right there, that's probably not us. We're going to take our time, take, take us about a week. Uh, we're not going to be the most expensive. Uh, you know, we do it for $79 for people that are age 50 and older, 149 for, for people that are under age 50. So, can, let me interrupt you. Like, yeah. how can, how is that possible that we can do that? Like, why? Because sometimes I hear or I, I run into someone who says, you know, what's the catch? Mm -hmm. You know, 79 bucks. what's the catch? So, what? why is it? How is it that we're able to do it for that price? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Maybe the best story is, uh, is a lawyer, actually, from, from Milwaukee who asked that same question was, you know, what's the catch? You guys are losing money. I said, well, not, not really. Maybe we're breaking even, but here's the deal. The more people know us, the more they love us. And, uh, you know, we're true holistic. That's what makes our firm go, whether it's tax, financial planning, Social Security, Medicare, investments, particularly with our adaptive investment management system, and then you have the insurance side of it. So we weave all those six pieces of puzzle, uh, puzzle pieces together. And so odds are, when they're done having their taxes done with us, uh, maybe it's that year, maybe it's the following year, they're going to do more business with us. And uh, we just like starting the conversations and they appreciate the service levels we get. You know, we get the service levels that are higher than Costco or Honda. And so that's another credit to the team. So so we feel we'll do great work, we'll have a great experience, and then throughout the rest of the year, they're going to have a question somewhere along their life for their financial um, pu puzzle pieces. And, you know, we're going to be the ones that are going to help with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, what I really enjoy about it is it gives a chance for people to get to know us. And experience our people and our processes um, without having to like necessarily get married you know when you meet with the financial planners and they're looking to manage your money it gets very hard to just hand that over right away without getting to know that person in taxes I mean that's part of the whole suite of things we're doing such as our lunch and learn like this video um, it's an opportunity for people to get to know us without having this like major major commitment mm -hmm. um, so good point on that and then last question that I want to I want to wrap up um, with and I might look at Justin for this because you mentioned, Paul, the true holistic process, which is unique to us. Uh, can you, Justin, kind of elaborate a little bit on the true holistic planning here at Client First? How do, how do tax planning and preparation fit into the true holistic process? Well, <clears throat> you know, I look, I look back. So we, we've been, we've had a financial uh, planning business and a tax business for several years now together. And I can't imagine having them, having a financial planning and investment firm without the tax because it's so integrated into what I do. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> uh, we really look as we're putting together the plan, we're looking not just to create income, you know, like from Social Security and investments, but we want to attack your expenses first. Mm -hmm. So those are taxes, those are insurance. So probably the two biggest things that are concerned to people are taxes and the cost of health insurance and health care. So we want to help give you guidance on both of those, reduce those as much as possible. Um, and they're really all connected. Um, mm -hmm. Right, just, exactly. We're just constantly looking for opportunities. It may, we may not even, we can't guarantee that we're going to save you on taxes, but at least if you know um, what you're going to pay and what to expect, and you know that you're not paying more than you should be, you have that right. peace of mind. And it, yeah, it's unique in our industry just from the standpoint uh, many places, it's 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 two separate things that are happening, and then the fingers are pointing at each other, right? Maybe you're having your assets managed over here, and then they say, okay, check with your CPA, who's completely at a different firm, and there's all this, maybe we could call it friction between the two, whereas here, that's a seamless process, right? We can communicate with one another on what the tax ramifications are for somebody, and it's not just kicking out a Monte Carlo simulation, it's actually sitting down and doing that planning, and which includes tax. I think you, when you said you can't imagine doing financial planning without tax, I think that's a big statement. Yeah, and it's everyone's situation is different. That's right. On, on the tax and Social Security side, like everyone, you're married, you're single, one spouse is older, some people, both spouses are the same. So everyone's scenario is a little bit different. You can't just, you just can't read a guide online and just figure it out. Right. Um, yeah, so makes total sense.
I'm glad we do it here. Um, I think it's a tremendous value to add for our clients. So that wraps it up for what we have for today. I appreciate your guys' time um, and your expertise. That was a lot of fun, and I hope you guys that are watching this enjoyed it too. Thank you very much for watching our video. We just got done uh, looking at some of the have-trues that were in media. We, we got done with a great panel discussion. Justin also covered uh, real-life case studies and how the true holistic system can, can work for you. We hope you found all this beneficial. Uh, we love feedback. So if you want to provide it for us in the comments under below, for those that are a live presentation, they actually get a form that they can use. So put your comments below. Like we mentioned before, we're big on education, so next month is going to be estate planning with attorney Rob Melick. He is a Penn State law grad, and he's going to cover some lessons learned from real-life case studies that he did with estate planning and also some do's and don'ts for your estate plan. And this also is part of our True Holistic plan, which covers taxes, estate planning, Social Security, Medicare, adaptive investment with our adaptive investment management system, and also insurance so these all put together, make sure you don't have any blind spots because you only have one chance at retirement. So if you would like to see how that can help you with your situation, feel free to call us at 262-335-1700 or get a hold of us at clientfirsttaxandwealth.com. Thanks again. Share this with your friends if you feel that this will be helpful for them for taxes or if, this, if you feel the true holistic system and process could help them as well. Appreciate you and we look forward to seeing you next month. Take care.